people really want to come closer to the maker of the universe and really that their life will become spiritual. People really want to rise and to grow in their spiritual labor and to achieve some results. And those results are different. Some of the people will see results as A victory over all their fears. Other people, they have certain requests, needs, like buying a house, finding a, a partner for life, having children, like big things. And for them, if they have not achieved that, if Hashem still did not answer their prayers, so for them, it's as if they haven't progressed a bit. Some other people, for them, spirituality and spiritual success is to have visions and to become psychic, to be able to sense things, to figure out things with your mind, to be able to see through things, to understand one thing from the other, that your thoughts will, will uh, travel in upper worlds, like many stories and examples that we, we've heard and been inspired by other righteous people who experience those things. So, the reason why people are not achieving those things, each and every one of those ones that I mentioned, and more, all the rest of those things, those were examples. But for you, you have yours. Like, one needs a car, one wants to make Aliyah and to move to Eretz Israel, one wants to his mother to be healthy, one wants, like, whatever, all all darkness of the world to, to just be gone. How do you achieve those things? What is really holding us back from all those achievements? The answer for that is simple and complex as one. It's simple because in reality it's simple. The Torah is telling you in simple way, that if you're going to believe, you will be answered. That if you will pray, you shall be answered. That's it. It's the end of the story. You need to pray, and if you're going to pray, you shall be answered. Why some of us are praying on million and one things, and we're not being answered yet. So then it becomes complex. There it becomes complex. What is the reason that it becomes complex? That many of us, most of us, all of us probably, were a lack of inner, inner tuning, inner connection. We are lack of inner confidence, self-confidence. For us to grab Hashem like Moshe held Hashem and to ride the king that is riding the storm. We are afraid to do what that Moshe did and we are scared to dare to go and jump into such deep waters like the true righteous people did. And then because we're afraid to do all those things, we're compromising on medium life. And then everything is like, yeah, I'm learning, thank God for learning, and I'm praying, yeah, thank God for praying. And yeah, I saw some private supervision, some amazing miracles I had, yeah, thank you Hashem for this, for that. And, but in the end of the day, you go to sleep exactly like you went to sleep yesterday. Maybe it's a little bit different, maybe you refresh some of the aspects of your life, maybe some of the parts of your life are not exactly the same. You're not suffering from all the trauma that you suffered one year ago. A little bit lighten up, but still the darkness comes at night and still the sadness is catching up and still the trauma is waking up when you feel and find yourself being pushed into a corner and still 
you wake up some of the mornings sad and depressed and lonely and upset. And during the days you find yourself lost and confused what you should do with your life, which book to start now, if you should, should do it but the dude, or maybe to eat something, maybe to rest, maybe to learn, maybe to chat with a friend and like, again, you became like a random person in a weary world and you're just like looking for your way in the dark. We will solve it Bezat Hashem tonight and I cannot promise you that every one of you will overpower all those levels tomorrow morning or already tonight but definitely I am promising you that if you will follow those steps you will. So first of all we need to come to that recognition understanding that the world is built from thousands of layers. It's many, many floors, first of all. And each victory that you're achieving is uplifting and rising you to the next level, no matter what, even if it's a tiny one. You wanted to eat a grape and you all, like grapes for an example, and you already ate 7 or 17 or 70 of them, and then you realized, oh, I forgot to make a bracha, I forgot to bless on the grapes, and then you take the last one, or that you have another three in your, in, in your bowl, and you're going to say, Baruch Ata Hashem, Elokeinu, Melech HaOlam, Bore, Peri, Haetz, and you say the bracha, and you eat that fruit, that grape, now you won. Now you achieved something gigantic, not something big, and definitely not something minor or small. Something very big you just achieved. And if you achieved that, that you didn't let your sadness and your despair and your depression break your spirit and tell you, ah, you already ate 20 grapes, you don't need to say another bracha, now you're going to say bracha, it doesn't tell, it won't help you. You already almost finished your meal. Now you're going to say bracha. All that criticism is coming from the side of the evil inclination. If you beat that negativity and you overpower that sadness and you conquered happiness and you became a person of faith, a person of trust, a person of generosity, a person of good attribute in any aspect of your life, if you overpowered and kicked away darkness and you conquer light, no matter after how many fallings, no matter how after how many crashes, if in a moment of your life you overpower darkness and you conquer light, you rise from that level to an upper one. Now when you seem to feel falling from your level to a lower level, you should believe and trust me on that because I fell already millions of times in my life. I felt like I'm falling, free falling millions of times in my life and more. And I promise you that none of those failures and fallings have not brought me to a lower level than I was before. None of them. Any of them. Just they helped me to be humble and to learn more lessons and to understand my skills. And actually they were the engine for my development. And on that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying that the Yerida is Takhlita Aliyah. That the down's purpose is to bring you up back again. That's what you do. You're catching speed in that down and then you fly back up. And that down is only an illusion. It's as if you're going down on a rolling ball that is spinning back up on you. So yeah, you are falling, but he's always bringing you back up. So it's like you're growing while you're falling. You're rising while you're going down.
That's what that is happening to you. Because if you're going to check yourself and ask yourself, okay, after the failure, did I became worse or better? The answer of the true believer, of the true servant of Hashem, is that he only became more humble, more modest, more nice, more gentle. All those obstacles, all those problems, all those challenges only softened our character, only made us holier, nicer, with more patience, with more goodwill, able to understand other people more, to care for people more, to want to help other people more, to be aware to other sides of our personality that were totally off, and now we want them to shine again, and on and on and on. So it's like I was experiencing a great pain, but that pain was uh, uh, like my 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 best startup it it was my push up to to levels that i would never achieve if i wouldn't fall so failure and falls are of false they're not real that's the lie the falling is a lie because after redemption the world be, will be nicer, more corrected, more perfect than it was when the Maker made it in the first moment in the Garden of Eden, right in the moment of creation. When it was in its peak of blooming and creation, when the light was shining in its peak, that will be dark compared to the moment of redemption after thousands of years of horrific sins of horrible crimes against humanity, against animals, against the planet, against the maker, against ourselves, against dignity, against honesty, against all goodness, violations of all codes in the cruelest, most vicious and, and lowest way of them all, like things that can never be even mentioned, are not we are not allowed even to say them. Horrible things that took place that they cannot be defined in any other way but darkness, evil, bad, sad, like worst of all worsts. And still, in the end of all ends, to conclusion, the world will be corrected and will rise to higher levels than if all those downs would not take place. So downs are not exist at all. They're just not part of our mission and definitely not to focus on. Because when you're focusing on something, you tilt toward that direction. When you drive your car and suddenly there is something on the side of the road and you look at it, you're not fast and furious. You don't know how to drive and to um, shoot down airplanes while you drive. Everyone are driving to where their eyes are taking them. You don't know how to... Oh yeah, I'm running the world with my right hand and my left hand making wonders. No, you cannot do that. If your eyes are looking to the left, you go to the left. If your eyes are going to the right, you're going to the right. Don't fool yourself. In reality, in life, if you're focusing on your difficulties, on your pain, on, on your sad parts of life, you're just going to drown in that swamp of, of bitterness. But if you're going to look at the good points of your life and you're going to recharge yourself focusing on the amazing developments and the change and, and the recovery and the greatest things that ever happened to you in life, you, you're going to just like be in the mood of growing more. You're going to say, man, that's like tasty. I want more. That was good. I can't, where, where, where can I find more of that? It's all about where you're focusing your mind. So when you're realizing that the world is built in layers, levels, 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 and now you have a test. Each moment we have a test. And your test in each moment is personal. Only you know the test. For two people that are going to sit in the same dining room, on the same table, with the same dishes, on the same, on, on same plates, they're going to have different missions. One will need to reject that food and one needs to consume that food. One needs to pay and one needs to ask pay for someone else to pay for him. So one needs to, like, to, to be brazen and one needs to be shy. Like, how can it be? 
Same situation, two different people, two different worlds, two different creations, two different aspects in life. Two people will answer to the same question. My answer is no. One of them is saying the truth and the other one is lying. Only you know if you are lying now or saying the truth. So how will you know what your, choice, uh, uh, your choices are? The, how you will grow, how you will climb from one level to the next? Always, but always and always choose good. Choose life. Be positive. Like, first of all, like, be normal, be good, be nice, be friendly, be positive, be generous. Become like the maker in your attribute. As he is kind, you should be kind. As he is generous, you should be generous. He is patient, you need to be patient. He is loving, you should be loving. He cares for others, you need to care for others. Any good things that you can see that is coming from its source is an order for you to... To, to become like that, to nullify yourself to that attribute and to be one with the Maker in His goodness. And all the evil side of the world, all that dark side of the moon, all that physicality that is shading our life and blocking our ability to see a person that is working, acting out of his anger, out of his rage, out of his sadness, out of his jealousy, out of his lack of patience, out of his depression, out of his fear, out of his terror, out of his trauma, out of his um, uh, uh, confusions. All those are not really who you are. All those are only outcomes of you focusing on your trauma, focusing on what that makes you upset, focusing on those things that brings you down. Don't focus them. Focus positive. You're going to choose right, and you're not going to choose wrong. Choose life, not going to choose death. Choose good, not going to choose bad. It's easy. And why it's so easy? Because you cannot have two thoughts in the same time. You cannot think about good things and on bad things in the same moment. One moment after, you can switch from right to wrong, from good to bad. No problem. But in the moment, you have only one thought in your head. So when you're recognizing a negative thought in your brain, walk away. Think on something good. Think on something positive. Whatever it is. An orange in Orlando. Who cares? It doesn't matter what you're going to do with yourself as long as you're pulling yourself out of sadness towards goodness, towards happiness, towards hope. You did it. You rise to the next level. Because every time that you overpower your evil inclination, you killed it. And you rise to the next level. And your mission is only to rise to the next level. Always. You don't know when it's going to finish. It might be that you have 20,000 levels to climb. And it might be that only 18,000. And it might be that only three to go. We can never know. When Mashiach is going to come, you know what's going to be so amazing. That when all of us are going to come to our completion. And for you, it can take a while. For me, it can feel as if it was only one moment it will take place in a certain moment in time that all of us even though that now we are completely blind from seeing it that moment will be the moment of completion of all the corrections of all the the, the lackings that were on our responsibility to correct when they all gonna be finished it's going to be one moment. For you, it seems like you have millions of years to work. For you, for another person, it seems as if he needs to do like so many. You don't really know how many doors. You, don't, you have one door that is locked now in front of your eyes. Open it. Do you know if there is another door after it? You don't know. You assume. Because to open that door was such a challenge. Because to cross that... Mm, obstacle was such a pain of course and you look at yourself I'm so weak I'm so tired I'm so ignorant I'm so lack of so many things you think 
your mind that is still trapped in illusions is telling you that you first need to be a billionaire, that you first need to get married, that you still need to have a house, that you still need to buy that car, that you need to make Aliyah, that you need to live in Eretz Israel, that you need to be in the Western Wall at least once in your life. All those imaginations, you don't know that that's really your mission. Do you have a mission? Like, do you, do you have a paper? Did, did God spoke to you? Do you have a list of duties? Do you have the list of obligations? Except for being good, being positive, keep Shabbat, eat kosher, put filin, go, give charity, help this guy, help that. Like, your commandments are in the present time that in any situation you are commanded what to do. The commandments are not telling you that next summer you need to visit Eretz Israel. No one who is promising you to live next summer or that the world will exist or that Mashiach wouldn't come one hour from now. Like you don't know anything and it's not your area. You're not supposed to put your mind into those nonsense. You're alive today. Today you need to work. What is my work? <laughs> Look around. What's the reality that you are trapped in? Where is that point in the world, in reality, that the maker of the universe sent you to? You're here? Okay, great. Now? Great. Amazing. Now you need to do some stuff. What? You need to work with your logic. You need to do the best you can. When? Now? For, for, for how long? Forever. That's it. I finished my explanation. In that moment in life, if you're going to invest your powers, superpowers, into bringing the redemption, it will take place. Now, you don't buy that. That's your problem. You don't believe me. You're going to keep on investing your time in making money because your logic tells you that you need to make money. I'm telling you, you don't need money. Oh no, who's going to pay my mortgage? Again, you're talking about one week from now. Okay, so Rav Dor is saying to his students that they don't need to work. Shut your mouths, you don't listen to me. I didn't say you don't need to work. If you feel that you need to work, if that's the right thing, if that's the way that the supervision is guiding you, that you need to work, you need to work. I'm working. I'm working. I'm being paid for my hours, for my time. I am a working person. I am a person who is working for his living. Does it mean that I also depend on my work to make money? It means that my trust is in my work to make money? No, you don't know that. Maybe all my trust is always on Hashem. Maybe I saw enough wonders and miracles in my life that I don't count on my work at all, and I'm always giving my payrolls to charity, and all my support is coming elsewhere from different places. Like, do you know what's going on with my pockets? You don't have a clue. And I'm telling you that I'm always giving more than I'm receiving, and I always have more than I need. I'm always giving charity more than I'm receiving, and I always have more than I need for all my needs, always. And if I need something, I am a humble person that is able to ask. And when I'm asking, I'm receiving always all my needs, always, always, always. And I'm not begging, and I'm not lying, and I'm not making up stories, and I'm doing everything in honesty by the book. I'm asking Hashem, what do you want me to do in this situation? Hashem brings the right idea into my mind, and I'm working according to that. And I am always have more than I need and I always give more than I have. How can that be? I don't know. But that's the way I live. I give more than I receive. Always I give more than I receive. You can see it in my bank. I, will, I can show you my papers. I am giving out more money that I'm gaining and I'm always plus. I'm never negative. And I give more than I receive. I, don't, I cannot explain it to you in math. Based on logic, it's impossible. But that is in 100%. And even the friends that worked with me in the past and not liking me so much today, they will also testify on that. My generosity is with no limits. It is with no borders. and never was. Always giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and always finally... I'm not saying that I'm not finding myself in stress. I'm not saying that I'm not finding myself in awkward situations. But I am always finding myself being helped and assisted by the maker of the universe and completing all the missions 
and succeeding in all my things and accomplishing all my goals and moving to the next. Always, always, always. Never stopped. Here I am. And if a person will invest his mind and his power like Moshe, Moshe was not praying on Burekasim or Rogalach or Jachnun or Pizza or Falafel or Shawarma. Moshe never prayed about Shawarma or Pizza or Burekasim or, or slices of, of I don't know what. No, Moshe Rabbeinu's mind was focused on redemption. So redemption was his share. Now why you're eating so much food? Because that's where your mind is at. And you have to eat healthy. Like I had a student once, he was eating healthy. You know how much healthy food he was eating a day? Like it wasn't like, what are you doing? You don't need so much health in your life. You're okay. You're healthy. You're good. Salads and, 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 and nuts. And, and oatmeal, and uh, goat cheese, and I don't know what, like ne no, not ending, and everything is organic, and so much of everything, like piles on piles of healthy food, like you, you don't need to be so healthy to be okay, like everything's okay, stop eating, you don't need to eat so much, again, not judging, the focus, a person can eat emotional eating and it's normal. If a person is suffering and he doesn't know how to deal with his thoughts and only when he's chewing, he's like coming back to his soberty. I'm, I'm for it. Like I'm, I'm going to sit to eat with him. Or I, like it's okay. But in reality, he needs to work on focusing on other things. He needs to learn how to overpower that attraction, that desire, that that addiction and with time he will be healed if he will focus on other things if he will learn how to think on that one positive thing while he is experiencing a negative thought penetrating into his zone and that's the recipe for success and you need to understand that it all depends on how much faith you have in yourself in how much faith you have in your destiny as a messenger, as a representative of the Maker. And you don't need to be Messiah and the Redeemer or the leader. Like I'm getting emails from people. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm soon going to start. I don't know. Like there are keywords that you can block from comments on YouTube. And like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to find, maybe I'm going to make that app to block emails with keywords of people who are claiming to be Messiah. You, like, uh, you make a video, people are, I am the Messiah. I am the Messiah. Like, do you know how many Messiah I already met in my life? Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. So many people are so into being the Redeemer. Like, do you know the pain? Do you know the trouble? Do you know the, the tests? Do you know what you're asking for? Like, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? A few months ago, a person sent me a message, told me like, I am the Messiah and on and on and on. I told him, look, with all the respect, can I tell you one thing? He said, yes. I told him, I really respect you. And I really believe you that you believe yourself in what you're saying. Not, you're not lying, first of all. I believe you. But I must tell you, that I already met hundreds of people who honestly believed themselves exactly as you are, maybe more. So I don't know what to do with that. Honestly. I cannot follow you just because you believe that you're Mashiach. I can bless you to succeed if you're a good person and you're wanting to do only good i can bless you to succeed i wish you are mashiach i don't want to be mashiach be mashiach go do the job bring redemption i'll follow you if it's you i'm following i don't care i don't need to to have any position i said to hashem once in hit bodedut i told him listen hashem I have some good ideas if you don't have no one with better ideas than mine please take mine but only until you're going to bring redemption. When you're going to bring redemption, 
Take it. I don't, I don't need no leadership. I don't need my ideas to, to conquer the world. I have some good ideas. Take them. Unless you have something better to like, okay, so then go do that. But in the moment that you're going to bring salvation, like, take it. Who needs the job? Let's say that now there is a redemption. Do you know the only person who will work hard in time of redemption will be Mashiach? He will need to meet everyone, to say Shalom Aleichem to everyone, to bless everyone, to heal all the sick. Like, he's the only one that's keep, going to keep on working. All the rest, oh man, everyone is fulfilling his dreams. This one is swimming with dolphins. That one is like climbing the highest mountains, looking at the most beautiful sunset. I want to hang out with my family, with my friends. Like, I, I want to have a nice corner, somewhere quiet under the, the fig tree and, and the vine tree in my, my, my backyard, relaxed and happy, like gonna have some guests, gonna drink some wine, it's, everything is great. Like, who needs to work in the time of redemption? You want to be Mashiach? First of all, be happy. First of all, be positive. And then do good. And then try all the time to clarify, how can I do a better good than the maximum good that I'm doing right now. I am doing good. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm working. I'm nice to my friends. I'm respecting my parents. I'm doing that. Okay, great things you're doing. Amazing. Is there something better I can do for you, Hashem? Is there something better I can do today, Hashem? For an example, like to open a book and to read one line. Da shekol adam kodem ha-shena ro'e kol ha-neshamot shel ha-metim shel krovim shelo o Done. How much time it took me? Not even 10 seconds. So what? You don't have 10 seconds? No. You don't have the power of the mind to pull out a book from your bookcase and to open and just to read. I just learned Torah. And not only that I learned Torah, I also shared it with you. So I taught Torah. And it's words of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Amazing words. Do you want to know what it said? Do you want to hear the translation? An amazing thing we just learned. Your souls already received it. Now your awareness is going to receive it as well. You should know that any person, before he goes to sleep, he sees all the souls of all the dead relatives of him or of those ones that are from the same root of his soul before he goes to sleep. And you don't catch that. You don't have the awareness to that. But before you go to sleep, in that moment that you are crossing towards sleep, boom, you see all the souls of all your relatives or all the souls that are from the root of your soul that are connected to you. Amazing sights you see and you don't see. Your soul can see and your awareness is blind. So... After learning something like that, what am I doing with it? I'm praying, please Hashem, how can that be? I see such wonderful sights. My soul can experience such amazing spiritual sights before I go to sleep and I'm blind to all of that. I'm disconnected from all of that to all of that. Please Hashem, open my eyes. Please Hashem, allow my soul to shine. Please Hashem, allow me to experience those amazing wonders that I'm capable and able to to enjoy from, like, man, to see Abraham Avinu, to see Yitzchak, to see Yaakov, to see Moshe, to see Aaron, to see Elazar ben Aaron HaKohen, to see Pinchas ben Elazar, oh man, Ribbono Shel Olam, to see Eliyahu Anavi, to see Rabbi Eliezer uh, uh, ben Yaakov, to see all the righteous people from all generations, like, man, where am I? Why am I so unaware? Why am I so blind? Why am I so... Sealed and blocked and covered with husks. Please Hashem, open my heart. Please Hashem, open my mind. Please Hashem, open my eyes. Such beautiful heat bodedut. From what? From reading one verse, one line, from one book. That took you more, less than 10 seconds to read. Take advantage of your time. Use any moment of your life to do something good. And in the moments that you don't know what to do, ask Hashem, please Hashem, what can I do for you? Please Hashem, what is the best, best thing I can do? Or think, what can I do? What is the best thing I can do right now? And then do it. Small things. Send a text. Hey friend, hey brother, how are you doing? What's going on? 
was just thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Please, Hashem, help Moshe. That's it. Done. Finish. You don't need one hour it would do it on Moshe and his trouble. Please, Hashem, help Moshe. That's it. It's enough. You did something good for your friend. That's it. I really answered your, your, your need. If you're going to follow that advice, you're going to just rise forever. Trust me, please, and do that. Thank you so super much. Thank you so much. So, do we have questions? Questions to be answered. Very nice. I'm very proud of you for being such quiet students. It's amazing. I'm, I'm so thankful. Baruch Hashem. Bezat Hashem from heaven. From heaven they will assist us always to rise and shine. Yes, please. A question, dear David. Do you know this rabbi? I, uh, I'll, I'll try. Oh, yeah. Rabbi Eliezer Shlomo Shik from Breslev. Somebody just gave me this coin. He's being called York. the Moharosh. You want to hear my story with him or you want to have yours? Sure. I don't know him. I, somebody just gave me this and he, said that it's good just, to have. So. He just gave you a call. <laughs> Literally right before this, right before this. Uh, so, this. so one time I, the first time actually, first time I've been to Uman. I didn't even like realize what's going on. Where am I going? Where am I heading? Like, what, what, what is it? Where is the grave of Rabbi Nachman? Like I was very... Uh, disoriented, like very lost, and um, and then I found myself in that area that they said that the grave of Rabbi Nachman is at. So I entered, and then I saw like people gathering into the center. So I also went towards that center, and there I saw the grave of Rabbi Nachman. So like like everyone are swimming among the people, I also swam toward the Tziyun, to the grave of Rabbi Nachman. And right when I reached the Tziyun, and I put my hands up on the Tziyun, the grave of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, suddenly I heard a voice of people screaming, the Tzaddik is coming, the Tzaddik is coming, the righteous man is coming, the righteous man is coming. And I just like arrived to the Tziyun, like I just touched the Tziyun. So I, I didn't realize what's going on. Like who? Like Rabbeinu? Like what do you mean? I didn't know any rabbis. I didn't know no names of righteous people. Like I... Like, yesterday I was secular, now I was in Uman. Like, what's going on here? No one knows. And like, okay, the righteous man is coming, the righteous man, Tzaddik Magia, Tzaddik Magia. Okay, and I'm looking around what's going on. I see a stream of people creating a certain path for the Moarosh to arrive to the Tzion. And I didn't know who he was, who he, like, nothing about him. He passed away, I think around 10 years ago, something like that. And uh, and uh, really? 10 years, he said? No, he said, I, I don't know what he said. I think, I think he said six to eight. Okay, something like that around that around that time. I, I'm, I don't remember exactly. And I, I've been to his funeral though, but I still do not remember the exact year that it was. Um, it was before we left to the US. Um, so it has to be around eight years or more, if I'm not wrong, again. Okay, so long story short, the stream led towards the Tziyun and I'm standing on the Tziyun. So now the students are creating a path for him to walk in between them and he's arriving to the Tziyun and they're like moving people to the sides and I'm standing in the first line because I was on the Tziyun and they like cleared the area for him to, to enter. So I'm like first line and he's praying and everyone are saying, please Amarosh, pray for my wife, please Amarosh, that I'm going to get married. Like everyone are asking him to pray for them for like needs, for their needs. And I, like any monkey see, monkey do, started to ask things for my wife to be healthy, for like whatever, everything that we, that we needed back then. 
and I did. And then one of the students said, you don't need to ask the Moarosh. He can hear your prayers, Divine Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh. Just pray and he will uplift your prayers. He will pray for you. Suddenly there was quiet all around. Everyone are tuned and listening to, to him, to the, like to, to, to the quiet and he's praying and like everyone are like in their hearts doing it Buddha Duyot and praying to Hashem and on and on. And then this amazing man is like stopping his prayer and turning back towards us with his back to the Tziyun, to the grave of Rabbi Nachman, looking all around, smiling to everyone, very shiny, very impressive face, very like handsome portrait, white beard, blue eyes, like all like shining and looking at, at, at all of us and starting to walk away. And you feel like I felt like everyone else around I, I'm missing the opportunity, like a great righteous man here, very impressive personality standing here, like uh, something and he's going already. I didn't know what to do. Everyone is saying, please, like again, screaming, please, Amarosh, pray for me for this, pray for me for that, like decree, decree this, decree that, and on and on. And I didn't know what to do. And it just burst out of my mouth. And I just said, just look at us. That's what I said. Just look at us, because his look was so impressive, his face was so impressive, he stopped, he heard what I said, he stopped, he turned towards me, only towards me, walked back to me, touched my face, kissed his hand like that, and told me, I'm looking at you always. That's what he said. And he left, and some went with him, and all the rest that left are all looking at me. And I'm standing like that, like a Hanukkah candle in the, in the middle of Rabbeinu's Tzion in Uman. Everyone are looking at me. Oh, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. And, and like, I didn't even realize what happened to me. I took a few steps back. I sat on a chair. I had to relax from this, like, very, very powerful experience for myself. And, uh, and that's it. After he passed away, after a few years, we went to his funeral, my son Or Abraham and a student of mine, uh, two students of mine back then, we drove together, uh, Benji and Chaim, um, very good drivers, and, uh, <laughs> and, and that's it. So we've been to his funeral in uh, Yavniel, in the north of Israel. So that's my story with him. So that Kamea is uh, something that he made and promised many promises for people who will carry it, that coin. And um, and that's it. Bezat Hashem, you shall see wonders. Amen. <laughs> thank you guys, everyone. Thank you for all good things. Thank you for friendship. Thank you for amazing things that you're doing for us. And may Hashem answer all your prayers and will make wonders for the rest of your lives. And um, to all your loved ones around you that you'll see. Um, them all growing and glowing and shining and prospering in any beautiful possible way and may Hashem affect you in great positive ways always for you always to be happy and healthy and successful in any possible way like we said thank you so much see you tomorrow Be'ezrat Hashem at 3 uh, p.m. Um, New York time and on Tuesday as well 3 p.m. and on Wednesday live streams all at 3 p.m. New York time and may all our prayers be answered in no time. Amen. Thank you so much.